welcome to our first edition of At on Air for the 2020-2021 school year. I'm Addie Shaney and we have a lot of stories to share with you today. First off, we are going to be in NTI through the end of October. Some students are loving it and others are ready to get back in the building. Let's take a look at what some of them have to say. Overall, I love NTI. It's kind of awkward. Um, especially with newer classmates that you don't really know too well because you can't really talk to them and get to know them and ask questions about them because we have so little time in class um, and you don't really necessarily have a way to talk to them. Some challenges are not seeing everyone, you know. Um, you can't really do a lot. You're kind of just sitting inside the whole day. It is a bit difficult learning online, but I feel like it's taught me to be more productive on my own and it's, it's teaching me how to gain my own learning style, which I really like. I don't like NTI at all. I'd rather be in actual school. I hope we do get to go back, but other than that, I don't like it. My whole experience was not this. I wasn't thinking it was going to be like this, but we got to do what we got to do right now. So, yeah. I miss my friends. I miss my teachers, especially the good ones. Uh, I miss being in school, going to lunch in the cafeteria, walking through the courtyard, the football games, the pep rallies, homecoming, all that. I miss every, every single bit of it. As we all continue to work from home, many Atherton students have created their own unique classrooms at home. Rhiannon Johnston gives us a sneak peek into students' NTI workspaces that include everything from to-do lists, stickers, and even custom lighting. Atherton High School sits empty as students this year transitioned into NTI learning. Desks that were once filled now sit unoccupied. While many students might miss these desks, others have created their own unique NTI workspaces to get them through their virtual classes. In my NTI workspace, there's more than just a Chromebook. There's stuff that I love. Between the to-do list and notebooks, students' workspaces contain stuff like stickers, pictures of their favorite TV characters, and candles, stuff you can never find at Atherton. Some students have taken the workspaces one step further and created an environment like no other. One student transformed their whole room into an LED light show. He claims it makes doing homework more fun. Others have taken comfort into consideration, huddling up in blankets on their beds while doing virtual classes. Students have certainly taken advantage of remote learning. This year is like no other and Atherton wants to remind the students to make the best out of the situation. Thanks, Rhiannon. I love how everyone seems to be putting their own personal touches on their work areas. So now that we know what students' workspaces look like, how do they actually use them throughout the day? Sophia Schindler is up next to guide us through a typical NTI school day. Hi everyone, my name is Sophia, and today I will be showing you what a day in my life looks like as an NTI student at Atherton. The day I'm filming this is on a Wednesday, so this is my asynchronous day where we don't have any live meetings. I kind of just do my homework and study and just catch up on things. After I drank my coffee, I just went up in my room and just started to do my work. I kind of wanted to get everything done early today. Um, I started with my physics homework and here's just a time lapse of me doing a worksheet that I was assigned. Then the next thing that I did was I did my IB English homework. Um, the night before, I had already read a few chapters, and I had already annotated a few things and kind of just like underlined the main points of the text. So today, I just summarized what I read in an assignment that we had to do, and I prepared my original prompt for my Socratic tomorrow. Then I took a shower, and after that, I started my math test. Um, here's just a short clip of it since I cannot show, obviously, what I did. Then later that evening, I decided to continue my Chapter 4 notes for AP US History. Um, here's just a time lapse of me doing my notes and just kind of highlighting like the main things in the chapter. We're currently learning about the colonies and kind of what life was like back then. Um, we also are learning about the Salem Witch Trials in this chapter, which I thought was really interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Then later that night, I started to edit this video. Um, first, I chose my audio that I wanted to use, made sure it was copyright free, and then kind of just started everything. First, I'm kind of just editing everything. I'm adding some voiceovers, and then I start to put over some video. So that is my day in a life on Wednesdays. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day. We'll have more student perspective on NTI later in the show. One thing is for sure, when we go back to school, we will likely be wearing masks. Who would have ever thought that this would be part of our everyday look? After Tune On Air correspondent Madison Heffernan has more. Hi, my name is Madison Heffernan, and I think it's safe to say that all of us have added a brand new addition to our wardrobe this 2020. And by all of us, I mean all of us. Now, what is that you may be thinking? Yup, you guessed it, masks. And by now, I'm sure we've all seen the very creative, out of the box, kind of pushing it mask concepts that have come out this year. And although America has seen its fair share of questionable and very concerning masks this year, we have also seen some very cute ones. This year, the mask industry took off. Smaller businesses as well as larger businesses are taking this amazing opportunity to profit off of the high demand for fashionable as well as sustainable masks. And two amazing Atherton students are actually doing just that. Let's take a look at senior Abigail Leach and junior Josie McClausland. Abby and her grandma have been working hard this quarantine to make these cute homemade masks. If you see one you'd like to buy, you can email her using your school email or you can check them out on Instagram at Nana's Mask Factory. Josie and her family members have also been busy creating and designing styles for masks at cheap and affordable prices for everyone. If you see a mask you'd like to buy, you can call them or contact them on Instagram and you can pick it up or they'll deliver it to you. Thank you guys so much for listening to me talk all about masks. And remember, stay safe, wash your hands, and always wear your mask out when you're out in public to protect yourself and those around you. For Atherton On Air, I'm Madison Everton. COVID-19 has caused a lot to be different this year, including athletics. Juniors Nina Valdez, Amy Codwell, Lily Kalin, and Sarah Montoya are here with everything you need to know about Atherton sports during the pandemic. They call me F-L-A-C-K-O and don't play no about my place. Big potato on that Draco, new bandana on my face. Ain't no stains up on my drapes, squeaky clean. You say, peep the teeth, no dentures, please. Princess nuts, no dentists, please. Say cheese for the cameras. Ain't G's for the dancers. Been G's in the safe. That's right. Been leaves for the families. But it all go to waste. So what more can I say? Race to the law, embrace it. Scar on my face. But what way? Hi guys, my name is Nina and this is your sports update for the week. As most of you have known, COVID-19 has changed the way that sports have had to operate for this year. For example, family is only allowed at the games, masks are required at all times, social distancing is in place, and at the end of the game, sports members cannot shake hands with the other teams once they are over. Now here's Lily Kalen with an update on the scores from this week's games. Here are some Atherton sports scores and updates you may have missed this week. The cross-country team ran in Trimble County on the 19th. Junior Rosemary Peters placed third and senior Harrison Boso placed second. The football team played Henry County on the 18th and lost 37-7. Senior Jeremiah Payne scored on a kickoff return. On the 17th, the field hockey team put up a good fight but lost to Collegiate 4-5. Sophomore Catherine Moore scored during the game which ended in a tie. After no one scored in overtime, the teams did flicks and junior Molly Jett and senior Julia Burns scored for Atherton. The volleyball team played Eastern on the 14th and won two of three sets. The scores for each set were 21 to 25, 25 to 13, and 26 to 24. The boys soccer team beat Wagner on the 15th, four to one. Juniors Cougar Nodler, Zach Wells, and Kevon Simon scored for Atherton. Last but not least, the girls soccer team beat Bullet East on the 19th, four to one. Freshman Emily Paul, sophomore Layla Salihovich, and senior Riley Hartley scored for the Rebels. On the 21st, the girls lost to Sacred Heart 4-1. The goal was scored by senior Allison Barnes with an assist from junior Amy Caldwell and was the second goal Atherton has scored against Sacred Heart ever. Those were some scores you may have missed this week. For Atherton On Air, I'm Lily Kalen. Thank you for that update, Lily. And lastly, we have Sarah Montoya on an update on the tennis team. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so how have you been holding up during quarantine? 
pretty good. Honestly, pretty good. <laughs> That's good. And has tennis helped you cope with the pandemic? And if so, how? It has helped me because most of my friends can't hang out now, whereas tennis lets me get out and meet new people. Yes, I love getting out of the house. I'm a very extroverted person, so like if I don't have people to talk to, I'm gonna get like very depressed. So, but do you still feel as motivated to play tennis as you did before the pandemic? I do. Yes. I feel a lot more motivated because I have not much else to do. So when I know that I can go to tennis and play with my friends, that's like a really motivating thing for me and I get to play better. And social distancing has widely affected how we interact with others. Do you think that it's also affected tennis? Not really, honestly, because a lot of people, it's, tennis is like automatically a socially distanced sport. Yeah. So I don't think so. Really. I do. I play matches sometimes and I'm only allowed to have one person come now instead of having like both of my parents. Now I can only have my mom or dad. And lastly, what would you say to people that are feeling unmotivated to go play a sport that they enjoy? Um, just go out and do it. If you, if you go out and do it, you might find out that you really love it and want to keep playing. Thanks, Sarah. And thanks, guys, for tuning into the sports segment for this week. For Athleton On Air, I'm Nina Valdez. Since we all got out of school last March, clubs and other after-school activities have been in a sticky situation due to COVID and have not been able to operate as they usually do. Here's reporter Isabel Parker with more on how one club is handling the changes. Hi, my name is Isabel Parker, and I'm here to talk about Atherton's stance on clubs this semester. Since we've gotten out of school last March, most clubs haven't had the opportunity to meet in person yet, so they decided to take the digital route. I've gotten the opportunity to speak with a few members from Y Club and share how their experience with Y Club is different since the pandemic has started. Here's an interview with Laurel Payton, a Y Club member. I'm here with Laurel Payton, a returning Y Club member. Hi. So I have a few questions for her on how the dynamic of Y Club has changed since the pandemic. Okay, so how has the pandemic affected your ability to get and have service hours? Um, we haven't been able to go out into the community as often, um, and the options are really limited for what we can do. Um, so most of the service that we've been doing has been like donating masks uh, to hospitals, um, but there's no um, in-person service that we can be doing right now. Have you all had the opportunity to meet in person since we got out of school? No, we haven't. We have our first virtual meeting on Wednesday. And then what does an online meeting look like and how does it compare to in person or what do you think it would compare to? Um, since we haven't had it yet, I assume that there are probably going to be less people there um, and freshmen who might have previously joined the Y Club in person might not want to anymore just because we don't have in person meetings and they just decided that KYA is going to be online for this year. Thanks for having me, Izzy. It's been a blast. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Laurel. Although the typical events that usually occur in person, they've been able to acclimate by doing them online, such as KYA and Kuna, which they're doing an online conference instead of in person this year. Although many clubs are still not meeting in person or have not started yet, they're still planning on occurring this year. So if you're interested in doing a club, still make sure to reach out. Thank you for watching At The Tenor Air. I'm Isabel Parker, and I hope you all learned a little bit more about clubs this semester. If you are interested in joining Y Club, here's Kaden Mulroney to explain what it's all about. Hey everyone, my name is Kaden and I'm the Vice President of the Student Y here at Atherton. So Student Y is all about modeling our actual government both on the state level at a conference called KYA and on the international level at a conference called CUNA. And one of the main things we do at KYA is write, debate, and pass student written bills that are all about things that we want to see change in Kentucky. And it's pretty much the same thing for CUNA but with international issues. And in both uh, conferences, there are different program areas that are modeled after the actual government itself. So like media core, lobbyist, Supreme Court, and so much more. So if you're interested in any way, we would love to have you. And you can email Ms. Bell for more information. Stay tuned for more information on clubs at the end of our show. Since fall has started and we're not able to enjoy the fall activities, here's reporter Ashley Iglesias with fun and safe way for us to enjoy the spooky season. It's finally fall, and are you bored at home and have nothing else to do but also want to hang out with friends while staying safe and social distancing? Hi, I'm Ashley Iglesias, and for this week's video on Atherton On Air, I will be talking about the ghost photo shoot. The ghost photo shoot is a trend that started on the popular app TikTok by the user of Jack Jansen 88 In his original video, Can't be the only one who hears you. Tears falling down at the party.
saddest little baby We can see that he dressed up as a ghost to encourage the spooky season. Since then, hundreds of teens around the globe have done their own spin on this trend. The concept is quite simple. You just grab a white bed sheet, go to a cool location, and snap a few pictures. I even tried it out myself. With some power of editing and tears, here's what my finished product came out to be. Tears falling down at the party. Saddest little baby. Here's a few other spins that many teens have done. I encourage many of y'all to actually do it. I am Ashley Iglesias and this was the ghost photo shoot. Thanks Ashley. Checking out new music is another enjoyable and safe way to pass the time during quarantine. Our very own music and film correspondent Kaden Eli is here to tell us about a couple of new releases you might enjoy. Many artists have been spending their time creating during this quarantine. And with all the new art and media that we have access to today, it's hard to keep up with it all. Today, I will be talking about today's new music, the upcoming artist Slauson Alone. Slauson Alone is an experimental producer and artist who has just released an EP labeled Regagen Heights Bevaltigung, Crater Speak, which loosely translates to English as working on past mistakes. Blending hip-hop, jazz, and his own experimental tastes together, Slauson Alone creates an open-hearted piece of art with something new to offer to the world that we have never heard before. The next artist I will be talking about, some of you may be more familiar with. The Flaming Lips have just released a new album titled American Head. This is their 16th studio album with Warner Brothers, and as lead singer Wayne Coyne puts it, it's something words cannot describe. For those of you unfamiliar with the band, the Flaming Lips are an experimental psychedelic rock band from Oklahoma City starting out in 1983. They're known as the band you must see at least once in your life. They put on an exciting show with visuals from LED lights, laser lights, to the lead singer crowd surfing and a giant bubble. Let's take a look. Thanks, Kanan. Hopefully everyone has a great fall break and we'll have more episodes of Atherton on Air coming your way, so make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We leave you today with some videos created by the intro to media students that show how they're surviving the world of NTI. And after that, we'll have some important contact information for clubs at Atherton. Thanks for watching, and remember what you do makes a difference. Grade. So you're a freshman? Yeah. What are some challenges you face during NTI? The effort to do work. It's been really hard. I've been just procrastinating my way through. What are some of the perks? 
perks of having a DI or <laughs> So what happened over the break before NTI started? My house burned down. I'm living in a hotel. This is the fifth month. I'm five months here. I'm ready to leave. Is Maria and I'm a sophomore. So far how I've been handling NTI is more smoothly than before because I've been doing this for four weeks so far. My office space is basically just my desk, some notebooks, and my laptop and some stationery. My thoughts on working with teachers and classmates through this way is kind of odd and weird because I'm not so like used to working with teachers through a screen. And this is my video.